All right, welcome guys. It's another day, another dollar. What we got here, we got the Navian NR180. So at this house, these units actually have all these tankless water heaters. I've been going here a long, uh, for quite a while. Um, so right here, we got 119 degrees and the customer states that there, there's no hot water happens intermittently. So what I did last visit, I was here on a Saturday because um, our company sent another plumber and the issue didn't appear on him. But then uh, the customer states that, I'm sorry, this is a tenant. So the tenant states that pretty much uh, every time that we're not around, we just, uh, she experiences the problem. So what I have concluded, right? She says she has like an error code of 0002. And you know, when I arrived, finally it appeared. So what they did is they just descaled the unit. And our company policy, which I can't disclose, we, which I'm gonna disclose anyways, but we always, you know, descale these units before we do any work because that's mostly the time. Any error code appears, we just descale the unit first. And I don't really agree with that because um, that's, the error code does sometimes doesn't show up. So I believe we just gotta service it first. I mean, what the, what is descale gonna do? So it's gonna just clean the coils of the heat exchanger. That's it. Which, I mean, yeah. So, if you look, um, some of you guys might say I dry, jerry rigged this, but you know I had no options. So what I did um, when I took off the the flame rod sensor right there, right? Um, apparently it. Unfortunately, on my end, it just um, the the screws was stuck so i just put like a hex screw i drilled through the heat exchanger it's not gonna cause a problem because i have the gasket over there so we're gonna replace it we got the part we just finally got the part it's right here we just ordered it so it's the flame sensor rod so i'll show you in a bit what it's supposed to look like so that way you guys have a better idea when you have these ignition failures i believe it's like 80 percent of the time it's this sometimes the manifold but i believe it's this it rare it's the manifold but you know it doesn't hurt to replace it too so all right so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go, so in order to replace, this is the way I replace it. Uh, so first what you gotta do, make sure you put this to one. Even though that the Navian techs, like I had um, multiple meetings from them, they don't recommend you using a drill, but as long as you use it on the low settings, you don't go max drive and like you're drilling through like food pipe. Just put it to one so that way you guys can, you know, you know, don't, you know, hurt these, uh, these screws. Cause it, you guys will like, I heard stories of where people when they were when they remove these things, they also uh, when they remove it, they also send it back to the lab, and they have like, <laughs> which is funny, they have um, they have like screw heads just popping off because they tighten it too much. Now that's this because this has been there for a long time. Um, it, the head basically came off from there. So you don't wanna you don't wanna screw it too hard. So what I did before on a Saturday when I was here, I just uh, what I did is I just used the um, what I did is I used uh, like a screw screwdriver. Oh shit! You don't want the screws falling off, but I used the screwdriver so that way I could take them off easily. So that way, you know, you don't have to deal with that. So. In this case, it's gonna be a bit tough for me to remove the, the flame sensor because like I said, I put a hex screw and I drilled through the, the existing like screws that was in there. Like I said, it's not gonna harm it. I'm just drilling through the new screw and that's it. And I put like, a hex screw, shouldn't cause a problem because those screws are meant to put, put on food pipes and all that. So we got this connect, I'll show you. So I'll put the camera in front. So we gotta disconnect this part right here. This is part of the flame sensor rod and then um. This is the transformer that you gotta remove these like screws heads and then you gotta just you just top popping off and pop this one off too you know um sometimes these rubber things they come off too so this is just so that way you don't you don't directly connect those things but you don't want to get in a habit of touching those because you could potentially make it dirty and cause problems um i said potentially i'm not saying you will but all right so once you got everything off now it's only a matter of just replacing this is the hard part. I mean, you gotta get like a little stubby screwdriver right there. But yeah, you gotta put, um, you gotta take off that screw right there. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do that. So, and I'll go use this, unchuck it. So then you have a little stubby one right here. And you just remove that one first. 
I used the drill and hole. So then, you got one screw off. This is for the flame sensor rod. And then, I got another bit, another bit. So this is like the Malco quarter inch to five eight, five eighths uh, bit. Really love this thing. I love this, this, this tool right here. This like bit right here. It like makes me just transition from quarter to five eighths because that's the most common ones for like, you know, metal screws. So what I do is like, uh, I go at an angle. So then, there we go. So then those are two screws. And then what you gotta do is you gotta take off this plate right here. Take this plate off and this is gonna hold. And then you remove it like that. You gotta move it very carefully. Sometimes it gets stuck and there you go. So I believe this is part of the issue because look at this. And I gotta I gotta take off that gasket too, so I forgot to get a, a, a scrubber. So so I'll show you an example. Okay, so this has the gasket. Okay. Look at this old one. You see that? Look how it's all discolorized and, and charcoal, and some of them are missing. It's supposed to look like this. See? It's clearer. It looks newer. Obviously, it's newer, but you always want to, you know, I try to clean this one with uh, uh, like a non-abrasive cloth, and it, it did the job for the meantime for for until we wait to order this part. So, but um, she still states that. It happens intermittently, but it was better than before. I showed her to those to turn off the unplug the unit, and then you could put it back on. And then, uh, yeah, pretty much that's it. We're gonna call Navy. We're gonna call Navian for this, but yeah, that's the pretty much the drill. This is the NR model, and it sucks that you have to take off the blower just in this model, because I know for the 240s, um, they're right here. They're like in this spot, but this is just an older model. Um, I know in our models, people say this is like the very first tanklesses that they have installed or recent, uh, resailed, but there was a bunch of other um, Navians that they had in stock. Just these units, since it's only like, um, it's only like a bathroom. It's pretty much like a bathroom and a kitchen and a dryer and a washer, I'm sorry. And they don't really need that much gallons per minute and they don't need to size that much. So they don't need like a hefty, um, like if they don't need like a hefty, um, you know what I mean? So I'm just trying to use, I don't have the scraper, so I'm just using my nails because I haven't cut them yet, but it's okay. And I'll just throw, you know, you gotta be courteous to the tenant, you know, even though it's like not their home, but they still live in it. So you gotta remove it all. There you go. All right, so I try to do as much as I can. Let me put the camera down and I'm, I'm just literally all I'm doing is I'm just using my knife, my scrubber knife, to like move the excess one, and I'm trying to be as careful as much as possible not to make it drop down into the um to where that you call it a chamber, but you don't want to have that there because you know that's where pretty much the ignition happens. And you just try to clean it off. Like I said, I wish I had my scraper, but I didn't bring it, man. I don't know how this gasket's gonna. I, I like I put it back. All right, I think I got most of it out. If not, we just gotta have to, you know. Maybe I could use a, because I don't have that much space to, I don't have that much space to put it in. So we'll just use, um, see if I got a thin flathead. I might just, just scrape that off, whatever. Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought that you know, just in three days, that this would like start burning up? But it makes sense because um, you know, it gets hot. It gets real hot. It gets real hot. <sighs> I don't know if I have any uh, paper towels, but I'm not trying to scratch this thing off. So let's see if I can grab a paper towel. All right. So we removed most of it out. We use like a. Um, See how it's like, it's okay. It's just like remnants of the old one. We should be fine. But yes, so what I'm gonna do, right? I'm gonna take a picture of the old one and put a picture of the new one and compare it. So that way, you know, I when I provide pictures and send invoices, they will know that like, I really legitimately replaced this. So so usually what I do is like, 
I just take both pictures. And the way I do them is I grab my phone and then I airdrop it to my tablet so that way I don't have to like text it to myself. That's the neat thing about you know That's the neat thing about um about iPhones. I love Androids but um iPhone has this it has this mode where you can do it and I'm just like damn man they gotta do something about that. <sighs> Alright. You gotta make sure the gasket falls in place. So you don't want no problems. So you gotta get this plate out before, and then you gotta squeeze this in, so that way you guys can put it in correctly. So what I like to do, I like to push it in, and before I even put it in, I take a picture of me putting it in, so that way, you know, just shows value to the customer when you, you know, give the receipts. And that's the way, that's important because you wanna make sure you got value. All right, so then, uh, you guys won't probably see this, but I'll show you at the end what it looks like. Make sure the gaskets are in line like that. And let me see if you can see it closely. Yeah, so let me just get my flashlight so you guys can see better. But yeah, that's how you want it. That's how you want your um. That's how you want your gaskets to line up too. Like I said, I drilled a pilot hole there, and that's just to screw in the old one in. Um, it's not gonna harm it, you know what I mean? Why would it? If you guys in the comments can tell me why it would harm it. Let me know. Tell me why. It worked. You know? You don't always gotta have those trolls in the comments. And I don't care, man. I had trolls in my old video. Yeah, I don't care. I just I just put it on so that way you guys can... Because I have a lot of people saying, Yo, teach me this stuff. Teach me these things. I can't. I wish I can. But I, I'm not really an instructor. I try my best to give instructional videos. Because... Like, I can't teach one by one all the time and repeat the same thing. I just wish I could do, do a class or something, but but I'm not really a teacher. Make sure that that gasket falls in place. And then, now you could do the mumble jumbo stuff. So what I do is I screw in this part first in. You save this later. You screw this part in. Make sure you put it in one because you can fucking take off this. Uh, you, could, uh, you could really damage it. Could really damage this stuff. Oh my god, don't tell me it fell. You don't want to lose these things either because I don't know if I have these kind of screws for a flame sensor rod. That would suck if I fell, if it fell in somewhere that I can't reach. Then I have to put another screw hole in. I just don't want to do all that process. It was kind of hard at first, but I got it and I was like, I was on tech support for a while and she's like, hey, can you guys help me? But you know, you know when you're on tech support. You know when you're in tech support and then you're like you figured it out on your own because you don't want to wait in a while Damn it. so this part's kind of tricky because when you put the gas in you really can't see and i hate the fact that it's in a weird position like i said they always improve stuff so we're just dealing with the old stuff not an issue not really not really a huge issue but something to complain about And then you can put it on too for the hex screws because like like I said that that is like you feel me? So this hex screw right here you can go over here and I'll show you what I so what I mean. Oh, man. I don't know if I can reach that. I can't. I can't reach that. Damn it. I had it before. Why is that going to be with me now? Let's see here. Yeah, I'm trying. Look, I'm trying to get the screw in, but that fucking flame rod is in the way. Yeah. So we'll see what I can do here. We might have to put a ninety, maybe a. I don't know. We shall see. I have to do the old-fashioned way. I have to use a channel lock. I don't have nothing uh, tiny like that. So we'll just uh, just use like a mini channel lock and just see if we can tighten up from that. Remember the old one didn't give me problems? This one for some reason is. So we really didn't um, think about 
they really didn't think about replacing this thing, man. But like I said, the newer models, you don't have problems with this because they're more accessible. Now we're just dealing with the old age. And you can't get away with this doing this, but like I said, let's see, let's see how see how far that is. And I don't know if I can put it in like that. And come on, man. Oof, maybe I could do this and then put it on. Maybe I could use a use a flathead somehow. Damn it, man. See how this thing annoys me. You know what? Let's put a flathead because we're having trouble here all right so i got i came back i went to my van real quick and i got these tiny tools these will probably help me just screw in that that uh metal screw or not i have this long one but i don't think it fits yeah see maybe if i could try to angle it and probably screw in a little bit more in but i don't think we can yeah, because, like, you know, I wish I could use this, but we'll see if we could use this tiny one, even though, like, it's not ideal. Because, um, ah, just trying to screw this in so that way we don't have no uh, gas leaks or anything. Or we won't get the flames outside here. That would, that would not be good. I mean, it's working now. But it's gonna take ages for me to screw this thing in. I guess I'll just, you know, screw it in when I'll let you know when it's screwed in. So, little time lapse. Finally got it in. Finally. You know what I did? I had to unloosen the other part and then I could sort of jerry, uh, sorry, I could play with it. Tilt it a little bit just not to disturb these rods so that way they're not really damaged in this new part because that would suck. Boy, we should be good. So we gotta do is connect our things back. We connect this part right here. Um, we can, we already connected this part right here. What did I drop? Oh, it's just a supply line. I'm not not <laughs> supply line. It's a it's a, a zip tie. So what I do is I I push these back so I know for sure that I'm going inside the rods. So that way you can have connectivity in the thing. And then you just make sure you're covered with that. And then this fell off again, but it's nothing too much to worry. And then, so the way I'm doing it is like, I have it pushed back right here. Instead of just pushing it in, you got this whole thing inside of that rod. Um, I wish I could admit that I know what that does, but it just all it does is connect to the flame sensor rod from the transformer over there. Um, I'll make sure they connect. Maybe that's just the spark igniter so they could spark, who knows. I just know well enough that, that just this, this whole thing needs to be replaced. All right, so that's it. See, so that's just how you connect that right there. So we'll put everything back in and then see how it goes. So we'll just connect everything. Remember, put it in one. Cause you're gonna end up messing up. Maybe we could put it in two. Cause that's not strong enough. There. They're all plastic parts, so make sure you don't go crazy with it. And my there's a magnetic tip, so that way this one might have to go further in. Too. There we go. And then um, we put back the air intake filter. Then, uh, then we should start this unit up and then should 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 be normal because it's new flame rod sensor so right. so without further ado we got everything back in let me just set this right here somewhere yeah. so we plug it in and then turn this thing on and then see how it goes Dude, the wind's so crazy, it's like blowing it off. All right, so far it says 119 degrees, but 
right there. 1915, 190. It's kind of hard to see in the camera, but yeah. All right, well, uh, without further ado, I guess we could turn a faucet on. I mean, so there's a little, there's like a, a, a link over there that we could turn on, but we'll just use the kitchen faucet. And then by default, you should see a green light. There you go, green light. Then it detects, um, it's the tech flow. And then right there, it says that the water, the faucet's running, it's blinking. So that's a good sign. Now if we go out into where the tank was is, it should not disrupt any codes. But yeah, so see all that flame inside? Yep, it's flame. Oof. Hot. That's some good. So we're just gonna stick around. I'll stick around for the next probably like 20 minutes. Uh, that's more than I need to get here because I already know it's a flame on Serato, but we'll just change. We'll just stay here. You know, it took it took longer than I expected just because the way it's lo located. But nonetheless, it's fixed. We're just gonna clarify to make sure it's no no other problems. All right, it's been a while, and we've been running. We implemented as if like we're doing a um, look how look how much condens it is condensing. But pretty much still flaming hot. See that? We implemented as if we're like taking a twenty minute shower. And so if we go here. Respect. I'm gonna just show my shoes, but um, it, it's kind of getting fogged up, but um. If I put my phone close by, let me see if it can fox up. But we'll just close this door. And then, because I let this door open, but it's pretty hot in here, man. It's pretty hot in here. Hopefully that light lens can grab it, but it's too clear there. Maybe we'll take another five minutes. All right, so I closed the lid back up because I already know it's working. Like, I, I just make sure there's no, well, we didn't touch anything on the water. Make sure there's no leaks. So I closed the bathroom. And if I don't see steam on the window, it means we're not in a good sign. Holy crap. This whole place is, yo, I got to turn this off. God, Lee. That whole place is fogging up. If I put my flashlight like this, look at all that, look at all that, uh, Look all that steam. All that steam's coming out. I'm gonna have to put the fan on because that is crazy. Oh my God, I messed up. But anyways, that's how you know that there's hot water coming out. And, cause I wanna triple make sure before I'm out of here. Cause we all know that we don't like callbacks. Yeah, no error codes. Um, and everything seems to be fine. I made sure that I was all working properly. We'll turn this turn this off but yeah there's a lot of steam in here yeah so there's a lot of steam so we know that it's 100 119 all right so we're good we're just gonna wrap up we're gonna write the ticket up and call it a day all right that really much concludes for today it took longer than i expected because of the location and before when I installed it, it wasn't a problem, but yeah, seriously, thank you guys for watching. And I know a lot of you guys, well, yeah, just that you guys are watching. If you've seen my first video, um, and I've seen all the comments, I do read them. I just, you know, just tied up with work. If you read it in the description, it does state that I'm not making one of those again, but I'm considered of doing it. The reason why I'm not doing it is because that video was more towards a project presentation. That's like, I know it says volume one and I just made it seem like it's probably like gonna be like a series, but I wish it can, but it's just that I can't really record on my company and I have to respect that. Like there's certain things that, you know, by policy I can't show and stuff like that. I could show what I do, but I could show, I could also show um, like the process of what we do things, but it's just there's certain things I can't show. And I had to cut a lot of things on the video and you know even though that video probably took me a while to, to edit i used like 
professional software. I even bought the equipment. I borrowed my friend's uh, camera. And if you look at the credits, you see his name. But um, I really want to make more of these, but we shall see in the future. Um, it's just a little video that I made because I was just like, hey, let me make a video because I want to see how see how it takes. Uh, but like I said, I really appreciate you guys watching. The first video, I got lots of compliments and it was really nice. I wish I could make something like that. But that was very time consuming just to make it like professional grade and especially the intro. Um, and you know, it's funny. I took It took me a week to edit. But then, because like I'm not really an editor. I know how to edit, but I'm not really like a professional editor. Like, it, like I can't just like do it on the spot because um, everyone you know everyone has a master at that i'm just moderate I, when i was a young kid i i love editing editing videos i loved youtube I, you can call me like the hidden mr beast because all i did was study youtube and i still watch youtube to this day i watch the things that i like to watch uh, but since you know i'm in the trade and i like to gear towards you know plumbing and um and other trades people i watch a paint apart i watch apartment maintenance that's what i've been watching recently just to get a grasp of how to do other things I will, I may be, I will do these in the future. It just depends on the feedback from you guys. Um, I know I've been very inactive. Um, I've just been working and I can't really upload stuff like this. Um, and plus, I don't have my camera no more. I'm using my iPhone. Like, my iPhone's literally, and everyone can make a, a, a nice video, vlog video, just from their phone as well. This is the, the, the technology. But I'm more of like, I want to use like a separate camera instead of just using my phone. I just think that different things work for certain things. So, anyways, I really appreciate you guys watching once again. Uh, we shall see. And I goes, hope you guys have a blessed day and hope you guys, wherever you're at, stay tuned and we'll see. Peace out.